And next up is Compromised. There's a like a video trailer here. We're gonna skip that because um, it kind of lasts a little while. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll skip the tutorial and just go straight into the game. So this game is pretty uh pretty good looking actually. Um, has sort of this gritty 90-ish, 90s look to it that you had in uh, in PC games at the time in the mid to late 90s. Generally games that dealt with cyberpunk themes. It's kind of interesting to see uh, to see that look coming back in some games. So there is a story in this game. Something about a virus. And we are defending against the virus. Honestly, I'm not too sure what this opening cutscene has to do with the gameplay. Sure are. That's weird. I used to have that handle years ago. Okay. As it says, we are outfitted with a combat ship system. Basically, the way the game plays is, uh, well, it's another dual joystick shooter. But, it's not the usual dual joystick shooter we usually get on Xblig. No zombies for one. So, that's a plus. Another is that, uh, it's a spaceship game. See, there we are. And there we're shooting. So even though it's a dual joystick shooter, it is different enough from what we usually see. Those doors closed. Alright, now here's the, basically the gameplay. We're a spaceship. There are enemy spaceships flying around. Let me shoot them and get these... Get sort of this fuel that can fuel our, uh, our special attacks. The thing that struck me about this game is... It looks remarkably good for x -Blig. I mean, like, surprisingly good. I guess it's kind of... Oh, there's a friend. That's an ally. I guess it's kind of sad that that's surprising, but still. Alright. We got this... I don't know if we would call it a mini-boss, but he got this sort of installation here. We have to shoot the, uh, the turrets, and anything that's bad in this game generally is colored red. Uh, did our friend get killed? Might have. Oh, we have enough for a special attack. So here's one. Rockets. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, uh, when I have enough for a special attack, the button that activates that special attack will change to an icon representing that attack. Game moves very... As you can see, the movement of the game is very fast. Got another friend. Uh, controls very well. No trouble at all with the game mechanics. And some of these backgrounds, I think, look really good. Got a blockage in this hallway, so let's just take out some of the debris.
game has some pretty nice atmosphere, actually. I'm not entirely sure what the spaceships have to do with that whole virus thing we saw at the beginning, but... Well, whatever, I guess. Alright, I have enough, uh, let's see, for this, the shield power-up. Again, honestly, I have to say, I was actually a little shocked to see a game like this on X-Blig. It... I mean, honestly, I would say, th from what I've seen of it so far, that this game seems like... Like, I could say it's good without the qualifier for X-Blig. And that's actually pretty rare. some more debris. Okay. Ran into some kind of a garbage compactor. Fortunately, it's destructible too. We just have to avoid getting sucked into it. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, d d d uh. It's a good thing that's not instant death. Uh, that's not good. So as, as I'm doing this, there is kind of a force pushing me into, uh, into those crushers. Okay, there we go. Mm. Let's uh, see where the last... Oh, okay. Before we could see where the last checkpoint was, the time expired. So, uh, that's compromised. That, so far, seems like one of the, the best games, actually, I've seen on x -Blig. Despite it being a dual-joystick shooter, it's different enough from the the multitudes of the um, the zombie killing no, first first person shooter I meant dual joystick shooter it's different enough from the multitudes of zombie based dual joystick shooters uh, that it gets my attention and it controls very well moves very fast seems looks good it's polished seems to have good audio um, yeah I mean this seems more like the kind of thing I might expect to have appeared on the PC in the late 90s and to be available on something like GOG, uh, rather than appearing now in 2012 on Xplig, on the same week that Avatar Fart came out. That's compromised, and I, I would strongly suggest taking a look at it if you think that style of gameplay is of interest to you. Next up is Brain Jump 3, the long-awaited third installment in the Brain Jump Trilogy. The shocking climax happens now. How will Brain Jump end? Alright, what, what kind of game is this? It's a game that asks trivia questions. And that's about it. There's no multiplayer mode or anything. At least I can't... I don't think there is. It's just single player. just asks you questions and you answer them if you want. If you so choose. If that's how you want to spend your time. Here are the categories. Most of them are locked because you wouldn't want to give too much away. First category is video games. We might as well choose that because video games. When was Akari Warriors released in the arcade? When was Zelda on NES released? When was Ocarina of Time on N64 released? 
kind of see a pattern to the questions. When was Halo on Xbox released? So, uh, as, at least as far as the video game questions go... Ah, okay, yeah, that one was later on in the system's lifespan. Final Fantasy Tactics on PS1. It just kind of follows this pattern. It asks you years of when games came out, and the difficulty of the question really depends on how far apart the years are. Like in this one for Excite Bike, the only one it could be would be 85. And sometimes the years will be closer to each other. Tomb Raider on PS1 has to be 96. Even if you don't know when the game came out, if you have a basic idea of when the system was active, then you'll know the answer to the question, won't you? Such as Super Mario Kart, everyone knows it came out in 1970. Uh, da, 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 da. Great. So, all, yeah, all the categories are like that. It just goes the same way with, with each one. That's really all there is to the game. I don't know why you'd buy it. You know, I mean, I guess for what what's here, it's it's well made. If you're going with the subject of less asks trivia questions about different subjects, this yeah, it seems competently put together. I'm just not sure why you'd buy it. Next up is Mambo. So let's choose our save slot. The save slots drawn in the sort of the model of uh, propaganda posters, which actually uh, has something to do with the story. And there is kind of a story to this game, yeah. So it's the classic story of the rebellious son denying the responsibilities that come with his birthright, refusing to follow in the steps of his father. Except, his father has died, so what will he do? Will he accept the responsibility of the throne? Has that time come for him to put away his independence and do what is right for the land? That's usually how these stories go, but it's not really how this one seems to go. So this kind of surprised me, because usually the way the story is, is the opportunistic chancellor attempts to grab power for himself. And then the son of the king has to return to topple the corrupt chancellor and regain the rightful throne and do what's right for the land and all that. But uh, apparently that's not the story to Mambo. In this game, the story is that the chancellor wants Mambo to come back to take the throne, but Mambo won't have any of it. He's coming back, but he's coming back to kill that monkey for daring to suggest that he take the throne. I'm not sure, yeah, it's kind of an odd twist to that story, but all right. So here's Mambo, and uh, it's a side-scrolling platformer, and as you can see, the... Whoop, got caught by that falling stone. It looks pretty good. Um, graphics have a nice cel-shaded look, everything's pretty bright and colorful. We fight by stomping on enemies or slashing with our lion's claws. And we can find these propaganda posters calling for the return of Mambo. You can just, just destroy them, deface them, because Mambo was not going to hear of it. He's not going to hear about returning to take the crown. Ah! 
That sound effect sounds like a straight from Earthworm Jim. Well, maybe Earthworm Jim got it from somewhere. The hammock apparently is a checkpoint, as far as I can tell. Oh, I died because of, uh... I think there are, might have been spikes there. But I think that hammock was a checkpoint. Yep, it was. Game, uh... Whoop, hold on. The walking... Ah, spikes again. The walking controls are alright, I guess. Uh, jumping controls, I'm not sure about, though. Something feels a little off, but I'm not really sure how to define it. I don't know if that swipe attack is really worth doing at all. It seems like you have much more uh, speed and motion just stomping enemies. So it appears that the creator of this game has a very uh, anti-monarchy -mon uh, stance. It's a gorilla with boxing gloves. Let's box that gorilla. Alright, let's just stomp on him. And I died in the spikes. So Mambo seems like a pretty angry lion. I forgot about the spikes again. They don't seem to stand out. Mambo never... never liked his way of life growing up. He never... ah... got eaten by cacti. I mean, like, the game looks good and for for Xblig, but I'm just not having fun playing it. You know, it's the it's kind of game that does a few things well, but did the same thing twice in a row. And it seems like, you know, a bit of work was put into this game, so it seems kind of a shame to just dismiss it like that, but... I don't know, I'm not really enjoying myself playing this. Oh, hold on. Okay. I almost did it again. And, uh, we have these black shirts. I don't know if they're agents of the Chancellor who have returned to, uh to convince Mambo to come back, but we're, uh, we're gonna kill them anyway. We're gonna jump on their heads and squash them. Mambo cares not for your politics. Kind of slug. Oh, can use it as a trampoline. And I died again. Okay. Like I said, I'm not exactly enjoying playing Mambo. Uh, like I, I'm, I kind of feel that I should be liking this more. I don't know. Just because it seems like it seems m more well done and a lot more effort put into it than a lot of Xplit games. But I'm also getting the feeling playing this that a lot of that effort might have been misguided because I just don't see this as coming together to make a good game. I don't know, maybe that's just me. But maybe you might see differently and maybe you want to might uh, maybe you might want to help Mambo overthrow the uh, the monarchy and change the uh, the system of government in whatever place this is to a democracy. Maybe you want to help him do that. If you wanna. It's, it's Mambo. Gentlemen! Stop your engines! 
Like the man said, it's time to start your engines with uh, a new racing game on Xblig. All right, let's see. Actually, hold on. Let's go, uh, let's see, we can try the garage the, to see what car we want. We can also go to the paint shop to customize our car. We can choose numbers for our car. We can choose colors. We'll just take a quick look at this before we start the race. We can choose a flag for the roof, including the Confederate flag? Okay, sure. We can choose a variety of flags. Anyway, let's start the actual game. Rolling Star! Rolling Star! Right, so it's, it's a racing game, as you can see. Cell shaded lots of cars on the track. I do like that. I do like how many cars they, uh, this game is fitting on the track without any kind of slowdown or choppiness, because that does seem to be a problem with some Xplig games. That when they try to do anything um, extensive in with polygonal graphics, that is difficult to keep up a frame rate. But this game does have a pretty impressive amount of cars on the track at once. The track, as you can see, uh, it's just an oval. You know, that's all we're doing. We get points for drifting. Controls are pretty forgiving. It's not difficult to control, really. You don't really go out of control to the extent that you might, uh, you might in something like Daytona USA. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, because really I don't, I haven't taken my hand, uh, my finger off of the accelerator this whole race. I haven't needed to do any braking or anything to drift. So I don't know if that's a, if you'd consider that a good or a bad thing. The announcer sounds so enthusiastic. It's probably the developer. They don't seem to be catching up with the number one place, though. I can't seem to get up to him. Alright, I end up in two and... That could just keep going if we wanted. Well, let's end that. Again, you know, another game that I would describe as not being bad and obviously having a good, you know, some effort put into it. Um, it's just that when it comes to something like a racing game, there's a lot of competition. And it's not the sort of game where, you know, like a platformer, where if you put, have an interesting take on it or interesting mechanics that it will be something that's more worthwhile to play than a game that's just really good racing game. You, you know what I mean by that? So even though a racing game is very basic, I think it's actually kind of di one of the more difficult genres to make a really good game in just because you have a lot of uh, professional competition in that regard. And there are some really, actually some pretty good racing games on x actually. So this does have quite a bit of competition. But again, like I said, it's a type of game where it's not really bad or anything. It's just... Uh, if you were playing a racing game, there's probably better. So I'm not really sure why you might go with this one. Well, I mean, it's a good attempt. Could probably could probably be improved into something better. But as it is, I, I don't know. Feels kind of plain. Now that's gentlemen, start your engines... Yeah, okay, there's the developer. It's a one-man team from Grenoble, France. Hometown of Andre the Giant. Don't hesitate Don't hesitate to contact for feedback or comments. So he seems rather, rather personable developer. I don't know what else he might have made, but... I mean, I, I think this was a good attempt. It's just that, uh... I don't know. Just needs something more. Next up is Revenge of the Sandwich. Let's 
It's a dual joystick shooter. Are you kidding me? Seriously, are you joking? Next up is Monster Cats. I don't think much explanation will be needed. Let me know once you recognize once what's this game supposed to be. Because I think you'll get it pretty soon. Do you see it yet? Maybe not. You will. So, does this game look, um, maybe a little familiar yet? Have you figured out yet what this game is going for? It's subtle, I know. Honestly, from the screenshots, I didn't really notice it either until I started playing, and then I realized, oh, I don't actually have to bother with a tutorial because I already know how to play this game. I guess that's one advantage of just completely... just completely ripping off a, a popular game, is that you don't have to worry about trying to learn how to play the game because you probably already know how. But just make sure, when you do rip off that game, you remove any kind of charm that the original game had. You know, any, maybe any kind of humor, or kind of, uh, any kind of good nature, maybe, that the game had. Because, you know, those things uh, are not needed for any kind of appeal, you know. No, just make the art style really ugly and have some kind of, what is that, heavy guitar soundtrack in the background that I'm hearing. Man, obviously you have a winner on your hands. See, I really like Plants vs. Zombies, so honestly, this is bothering me a little bit. Oh, there's an item on the field. Let me get that. Some kind of weird spike thing that adds to my money. I don't know what it is, but who cares? I mean, you you get this is Plants vs. Zombies, right? I mean, maybe you haven't played the game, but I assume if you have that you figured out a few minutes ago what I was what I was talking about. So basically, Plants vs. Zombies, if you hadn't played it, is 
a game by PopCap, a game known, for, uh, you know, a company known for their casual games. Plants vs. Zombies, I thought, was their best game that they've made. Uh, it's really addictive. It's very fun. Very simple. So it does have a, a limited shelf life, but uh, for for the time it lasts, it's really good. And this game is pretty much it pretty much plays exactly like Plants vs. Zombies, except like I said, it's a lot uglier. And any kind of charm that the that Plants vs. Zombies had, and that was a very charming game, is completely stripped from this. Plants vs. Zombies is on Xbox Live Arcade, too. You know, I... This seems kind of like an odd choice, then. It's kind of like if Castle Miner and Fortress Craft were put on uh, Xbox Live Arcade after Minecraft was already on, uh, on the arcade. I should say after the, uh, If it was like you put them on Xbox before Minecraft was on Xbox Live Arcade. Ugh. I mean, I guess, yeah, it's a dollar, right? So, I guess that's the appeal. You're only paying a dollar. But the real deal is much better, and it can't cost that much, right? I mean, sure, if you want to make a variation of Plants vs. Zombies, sure. Go ahead, because it's a good game. And I'm sure that some fun variations could be made of it. But, um... This is just straight up Plants vs. Zombies. You know, even the, the interface is the same interface that the Xbox Live Arcade version of the game has. That cursor, that square cursor... That's how you control the Xbox Live Arcade version. I press the L and R buttons to, uh... To select the the card I'm using, that again is the same way the XBLA version works. Ah, that was a bomb. I see. So even though I, you know, I I do like it when a game on this service tries to be something pretty good. I can't really abide this just because it is just straight up Plants vs. Zombies with with different sprites. And just kind of ugly. And instead of, you know, catching a uh, sun, we catch wind in this. To power the windmills, to generate whatever it is to build stuff. No, I don't want to unlock the full game. So, the last game this week has no title screen, but it's called Avatar Falls Down Stairs. And the game is about as good as the name makes it sound. Okay, there's the Avatar. We're standing on top of some stairs. What do you suppose we're gonna do?
That peer review system, working good. It's working real well. Separating that wheat from the chaff. <laughs> There's some different staircases we can pick. Oh, look. It's all twisty. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if exploit could be used as an argument against democracy. <laughs> you know that that uh that head, the robot head. I, that's not the usual thing I have in my avatar. But I think I'll keep it, because the facial expression kind of... kind of matches what I'm thinking about this right now. Please don't buy this. You'll make me feel bad if you buy this. So I guess that's Explic for the week of May 20th to May 26th, 2012. Weird combination of games this time. I mean, there were some actually well-made stuff. Uh, like, I would say that the, the standout was compromised. Like I said, I thought that game was pretty good, even without saying for x -Blake. But there was also some other good, you know, pretty well-made stuff, such as MIG Madness. Um, Mambo, even though I didn't really enjoy it, it seemed pretty, f fairly well-made. <coughs> fairly well-made. Mm. Gentlemen, start your engines. Wasn't bad. And then you have some really boggling stuff. Like this, Avatar Fart. Zombies Stole My Liquor. Oh, actually, that one, I shouldn't include that one, because what I really should include is Revenge of the Sandwich. That's just an excusable. Then Monster Cats. Which, if Plants vs. Zombies didn't exist, that might actually be a pretty good game. But it does exist. Oh, man. <sighs> Sometimes I wonder if Microsoft is going to keep this service around in the next generation. If maybe they'll just say, No. Yeah, we're, we're getting rid of it. Sorry. Oh, and by the way, thanks to uh, Story Sender last week, I got a lot of messages in my inbox as people were rather baffled about what I was trying to tell them about uh about that I'm a pirate and coming for booty. No, I didn't lose a bet. I inflicted on myself. And then some people are quite into the idea. And someone sent me a voice message. Let's hear it. You may obtain my booty any day of the week, you fine, fine gentleman. I'm glad some people enjoyed uh, the material that Story Sender had to send them. And then uh, thank you, a good listener, for sending me every message that the Story Sender trial has to send. Thank you very much for that. 
Mhm. Oh, and by the way, um, that message. was referring to that. So, look forward to that. But that was uh, x Blick for this week. Man, I think I'll probably continue to look at Compromised. I might buy that one, because I, I, I kind of like that. So, we'll see about that. See you next time.